joining in with us on Zoom. Thank for him all evening. Thank you so much, Sanjay, for uh, gracing us on this occasion. We know he has he's an award-winning actor. We know he is uh, a light that many of us look up to. What we also know that he is one of the humblest human beings. It has been a true honor to serve you as your doctor. One of the uh, things I always pull his leg on, I call him Sanju, he calls me Sevanti Ji. It's always been like that. It's so amazing. That's the degree of his humbleness. For the patients, the patient advocates who are in the room, for my colleagues, I want to bring to light what many of us already know, but would like to know from you directly. And I will begin from the beginning of your cancer journey. Sanju is also the global champion for cancer care and was appointed to be this by the Defeat NCD partnership based in Geneva and he has been doing work on that with patient awareness, precision awareness. But this is something that happened later after the diagnosis. When he was diagnosed, of course, there must have been many, many emotions that he must have gone through. And uh, so I begin with the question, what were the first feelings when you were told? And how did you react to it? Good evening, everybody. And uh, it's such an honor to be here uh, today to share my experience. And uh, I just want to thank everybody sitting here and who's willing to help uh, people who are in need like me. I just want to say that I am a real life hero, but she is the real hero here. You know? I mean, I do all the bashing and dancing on screen, but she does it in real life. And uh, as your question goes, Sivantiji, is that uh, you know, I, I was just talking to my sister and uh, Dr. Tarang and <coughs> everybody inside is that how do I come to know that I have that I have cancer? I mean, I, I didn't know about it. I mean, I had some backache and stuff like that and I was just being treated, you know, with a hot bo water bottle and some uh, painkillers. And uh, till I, I just couldn't breathe, you know, one day. And uh, I was taken to the hospital and they saw there was a lot of lung uh, water in my lungs. And they did some tapping stuff. And, uh, but the thing was that, that, that I had cancer was not broken to me in a proper way. You know, it was done in a different way where uh, my, my wife was not there, my family, sisters, nobody was there, I was alone. And this guy walks up and he says, we've got cancer. So it hit me. Uh, I just couldn't understand it. And then uh, my wife was at Dubai. And uh, here she didn't know about it. Then Priya was told. Priya came. And she said, that you, you know, you, I think they've got cancer. So uh, my first reaction was that, uh, OK, I got cancer. What are you going to do about it? I mean, see, you know what happens? Your whole life reflects back on you. I mean, uh, you know, everything just came back, and my children, and my, you know, and I have a history in my family. My mom died of pancreatic cancer. My wife died of uh, the brain cancer and everything. And it, it was like a shock. So I, the first thing I said was that let it be. I don't want any treatment. So they said, you have to be treated. And I said, I can't take chemotherapy and all that stuff. So let it be. And if it's meant to be, it's meant to be and I'm going to go. So uh, Rakesh Kumarji, Rakesh Roshanji, he spoke to me. And he says, hey, Sanjay, there's this doctor, Sevanti. She's amazing and all that. And you go and be treated by her. I said, sir, I'm not interested. 
He said, I'll tell you something, she's really pretty also. I said, really? I said, then I'm going. <laughs> anyway, but uh, I went and we met Sevantiji. See, uh, wo I realized one thing is that uh, I had to fight this and uh, I just didn't have cancer. That is it. I'm, I've been treated for something else. And uh, I think initially you couldn't understand I mean, how come I'm telling you all that, right? That's correct. That's very correct. He said, I'm going to just think I don't have cancer. And whatever it is, I'm going to beat it. That's how I'm going to take it. And I'm just uh, sitting there staring at him, thinking, you know, how we define denial in our uh, books. I thought, oh, he's in denial. But actually, he wasn't in denial. He had just pledged to go through this be brave about it and face it head on and that's what played out through the treatment you know i saw my family break down i saw my wife breaking down i saw my sisters broken i saw everybody breaking around me and i decided one night and i sat down and i told myself i said if i break down if i fall sick they are gonna fall sick you know so i mean i gotta not fall sick and uh, I'm going to be so tough. I mean, who, what is cancer? I mean, I've fought so many battles. I'll fight this thing, whatever it is. And we went for the treatment. And uh, there was a pipe put in my chest. I think to drain the water out. And uh, I remember I told Sevandiji, this is going to come out in two weeks. I told you this. That's correct. And what happened? It did. And when he came back for the two weekly follow up, uh, I told the surgeon we put the tube in. We are in for a challenge because he's expecting that the tube will come out. And will it? Because it was all hemorrhagic. It was bloody pleural effusion. It was bloody fluid in the lung. But two weeks later, the fluid had already dried out. That's where I would like to mention the angle of precision. So, uh, Sanjay, when we were testing you, before the treatment, we sent out some tests. We sent out blood tests, we sent out tissue-based tests, and now you are one of the biggest proponents of the testing. So we found a particular test that was positive. PDL1. PDL1 test was positive. And you know, we drew diagrams and we drew if the PDL1 was this much, this is what the treatment will be. If the PDL1 was this much, this is what the treatment will be. But even with the biomarkers, Sanjay, and that's the confession, was over-treated. Uh, his PDL1 was very high, but still I didn't have the courage to give him only immunotherapy, which is the uh, which is the standard of care, and he was treated with combination chemotherapy and immunotherapy. And I would like to acknowledge that I did not cut any doses. He is a gentleman with a Caucasian build and he was hammered with the right doses, 100% doses as per his body surface area. No corners cut. And the day of the therapy and the next day and the following day and the day after and the day after, he would continue to exercise every day, every single day two hours on the treadmill and I would get the uh, WhatsApp of his exercises and many of us who were involved in his care would, would get that. And he also went back to working almost right away. We want to hear from you how all that happened. You know, I uh, realized one thing is that, uh, uh, I mean, I didn't want to lie about the cancer, you know. Uh, you know, people kind of uh, don't want to make it public and they want to just not tell people and uh, because, you know, the work suffers and uh, there are a lot of factors which are involved in, uh, in this. But uh, I chose to speak about it, yeah, I mean, at the cost of my career or anything, so that I could help uh, people who are in need, you know. And uh, I told Sevati ji, is that uh, Sevati ji, can I please uh, go for my shooting? 
So she said, no, no, you can't go for your shooting now. It's just started. Peak of COVID. <laughs> peak of COVID. Yeah, but the chemo had just started. Oh. I said, you have to let me go. I said, it's for my, uh, my moral boost. And uh, it's for the people of the industry who I'm working with. And I got to go for that shoot. I convinced her and I went. And she said, what is the shoot? I said, I just have to stand there and that's it, you know. But uh, it wasn't like that. I was put on a harness and I was hanging upside down. And Six hours he was hanging upside down in a harness right after chemotherapy. I was told he was just going to do like a dubbing, a small shoot, something like that. But he was doing that. So one thing that he touched upon very, very quickly was one of his strongest points. And I want to bring that up front as I see. Uh, I have Priya, Miss Priya, the Mrs. Priya that in the crowd, and I see Mr. Paresh Gilani, Sanju's good friend here, and Mrs. Manita that as well. One of the things that he touched upon was friends and family, and second thing he touched upon was being upfront. So when he came to his treatment with me, and uh, I was getting hounded by media, and I wouldn't pick up my phone. I said, Sanju, how do you want me to present the story? And he said, as is. I don't want to hide anything. You can go ahead and tell what you want to, as is, as I'm going through therapy, no changing of facts. That, I think, was, is very courageous. That and the fact that he never hid anything from friends and family and you can see his family and his friend from long distance his lifetime friend Mr. Paresh Hilani Paresh thank you so much for joining us and Mana, thank you a big thank you to you also for thank joining us thank you Doc, for having me thank you good evening everybody thank you for having me and uh, Paresh do you want to say something um, uh, you know, Dr. Samanthi, obviously you've been a champion leading this entire effort uh, and doing it. Obviously, and you know, when this whole thing happened, uh, it was came shock to everyone, obviously, uh, just as it is every patient actually does when they are told. Um, it's it's the it's the courage of the patient, which which happens to be you know Sanju, we call him, and then it's Sanjita. Um, and the family that comes around and, and then eventually leans into a caretaker who leads that, which is you, uh, navigating the entire thing. It was a complex role where we found out. It was COVID, midst of the COVID, uh, don't know what to do, can't stay in the hospital, you may get infected. If you stay there, if you get out, what do you do? It was, it was a chaos in, a certain, in, in, in a many ways. And how it actually came together, as, as you know, Priya stepped in immediately. Mala, unfortunately, was in Dubai. I was in the U.S. How it had to be collaborated, but then it was anchored around you to actually lead us to to what it is. Courage of Sanju, which is always shown, you know, in, in many ways, to just just buckle up and say, you know what, let's face this, you know, and take the bull by the horn, ride it. You led us, and we support it. And, and, and obviously, the navigation part was extremely important, and, and I believe how it all came together was, was obviously a miracle, but was also very deliberate, you know, on a part of exploring every option that we had. Uh, you actually led the way, and, and, and obviously, the, the hospital at that point was full of Okilaben and your support staffs and everybody. It was, it was definitely an effort. Uh, which I believe that should be spread and also be been been learned from. Um, giving all the tools and, and access we had, obviously it was limited because of COVID. But uh, I truly believe that what you have led, along with Sanjay's courage, we're just Priya, myself, Mana, and everybody just playing a supporting cast. Thank you, and thank you. Thank, a big thank you to you too, Parish, for uh, all your support all the way through and for being the uh, Sanju's biggest support so far. And of course, uh, uh, his, his uh, lifetime friend. 
So thank you. Thank you, Paresh, for joining us as well. I